Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Come here, little girl. A Macomb County couple reunited with their pet after it's taken for a wild ride during a car theft. A Texas man accused of being married to multiple women at the same time, including one from Michigan. How the discovery was made. And a severely wounded dog left for dead. Tonight, the race is on to try to keep him alive. Thanks for being with us tonight. That dog rescued in Detroit has some of the worst injuries even longtime dog advocates say they've ever seen. Tonight, the pit mastiff mix has undergone emergency surgery and fingers are crossed he'll pull through. Mara McDonald live downtown tonight. Uh, Mara, this was a rescue by the Detroit pit crew. It was Devin and they got the tip that there was this severely injured dog on the west side near Burwood. They got out there and they looked and they looked and they couldn't see him. But to give you an idea of how bad these injuries are, they could smell him. He was literally, I would say, if we didn't take him today, he would have died tonight. Like, He's such a sweet yeah. boy who has been through so much. When Detroit pit crew rescues Teresa Sumter found him this afternoon, he was curled up in a patch of grass on Detroit's west side. Today was a first for me. I have never, ever, ever rescued a live animal that had that many maggots on him. We couldn't visually see him, but we could smell him long before we found him. They estimate this pit mastiff mix is between two to three years old, who inflicted these horrible injuries, and whether it was dog fighting or something else is unknown, but his injuries are brutal. His entire neck area is like raw hamburger. His mouth has so much dead tissue, maggots and flies had made themselves at home. The vets at Centerline Veterinary Hospital sprang into action the minute he hit the door. Started assessing all the damage and all the injuries and working on the infection, getting rid of the maggots. Um, and so at this, at this point, I would say his prognosis is guarded uh, because he has a lot of dead tissue underneath um, his neck area and things. But um, we're hopeful, we do have hope that he will make it. Back here live, as you might imagine, surgery of this caliber is not inexpensive right now. Bills for this dog are about $1,500. The Detroit Pit Crew Rescue is fundraising. You can contact them through their Facebook page, but the veterinary hospital that has taken such good care of him, you can, if you're interested, you can contact them directly and donate as well. And Devin Karen, so you know, there is some video out there of this dog's rescue that is pretty graphic. We decided not to use it simply because it's a lot. And if you want to look at it, you can always find it on social media. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. So upsetting. Thank you, Mara. New tonight, a Houston area firefighter is arrested after his new bride discovers he's still married to a woman in Michigan. Nathaniel Joseph Diamato facing charges of bigamy, and he may have more wives out there. Jermont Terry live with how this discovery was made. Jermont. Karen, at one point, this man lived in Michigan. He also Four. married a woman in the late 1990s. But police in Michigan say when Diamanto, Nathaniel Diamanto, left the state, he didn't decide to divorce his wife. Instead, he decided to marry other women. Investigators in Houston took Nathaniel Diamanto into custody Monday afternoon. So what do you have to say for yourself? Did you do it? Are you guilty? He didn't say anything as he headed to jail, but police say Diamanto's been a busy man, or should we say husband. He's charged with bigamy. An ongoing investigation reveals Diamanto is married to two women. One wife lives in Texas, the other right here in Michigan. And there's a good chance there might be others across the country. Back in 1998, Diamanto married a woman here in Michigan. Now exactly when he left the state and that wife behind is unclear, but he recently tied the knot two months ago to a woman in Texas. That new bride found out her hubby wasn't so truthful and was hiding something big. She had started receiving phone calls from other females uh, basically indicating that she's married, you know, that they were married to the same individual she had just got married to. The first wife from Michigan flew to Texas and provided proof she and Diamanto are still married. That was enough to get him on the bigamy charge, which is a felony. This is a, a deal that's against the law. And tonight, investigators in Texas, uh, they believe that they are talking to other women who also believe they tied the knot with Diamanto. Investigators believe that it was more than just the two women that they know about at this time. Live in the newsroom, Jermont Terry, Local 4. We've got a cool night tonight, some showers while we sleep, which actually is kind of perfect. Yeah. It's good to sleep while it's raining. It would definitely help us go to bed, and not too bad for the lawns, too. We could That's use true, it. That's true, yeah.
Uh, some of that will be lingering for the morning commute, but in very few spots. You can see those showers starting to move in from the west. Lansing, at least north of the city, getting wet right now. And eventually uh, that will spread down through just about all of the area tonight. By the time we wake up tomorrow morning, uh, very few of us are going to be seeing those showers. But right now it's the northern end of Sandalite County here in our uh, viewing area proper. That's getting just a couple showers there around Sandusky and now leaving towards the uh, lake as well. As far as temperatures go, they're in the 60s. This is pretty much how it's going to feel like by lunchtime tomorrow, and we're really not going to beat uh, the numbers that we had today. 66 there at noon, we're looking for maybe 70, uh, and that's going to be uh, the highest temperature that we're expecting in some of the areas later on tomorrow. Showers south for the morning commute and starting to leave. So most of tomorrow will be dry. Now the question is, when do we get the heat back? We will look at the temperatures for the rest of the seven days coming up in a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. Tonight, the Detroit Police Department has launched an internal investigation to get to the bottom of a car crash that happened after a police chase ended. Earlier today, a car crashed into a church at the corner of Chicago and Stopel on Detroit's west side. Three people were taken to the hospital. The Detroit Coalition Against Police Brutality is raising concerns about police chases through neighborhoods. The DPD says there was a chase, but that it was terminated before the crash, and it's still under investigation. A fight at a bar in St. Clair Shores ends with one dead and two in handcuffs. Andrew Worley and Mark Foster are facing charges connected with the death of 56-year-old Eric Heisel. Police said the men were arguing in the parking lot of Capone's Bar on Harper, just north of Nine Mile. They say the altercation turned physical and ended with Heisel on the ground, unconscious, and he later died at the hospital. Police believe the argument was about money. A health physicist at Michigan State University has been charged with bestiality. 51-year-old Joseph Haiti is charged with two counts of committing a crime against nature involving a basset hound. The incidents occurred between January and March but did not occur on campus. The dog has been removed and is with Ingham County Animal Control. Haiti is due back in court June 14th. Tomorrow, former MSU President Luana Simon is going to answer questions about how Larry Nasser was allowed to prey on young athletes while remaining on the school medical staff. Simon is going to testify under subpoena before a U.S. Senate panel. MSU is accused of ignoring the complaints that date back to the 1990s about Nasser. Of course, Nasser is currently in prison serving a life sentence after admitting to molesting the young athletes. That hearing for tomorrow set for 3 p.m. in Washington, and we'll be following it. Dog reunited with the family tonight after going for a wild ride when a thief takes off with the owner's car and crashes it. Tim Pamplin picks up the story from Macomb County. The story all starts with this man with a baseball cap, walks into Joe's Beer and Wine, grabs himself a Schlitz malt liquor, gets on his bicycle, and scopes out this car, the orange Kia. The engine's running. Oh, easy pickings. Inside was 12-year-old Lila, the boxer. This car thief didn't care. Nope, he hops in, gone quick, fast, and in a hurry. The car owner says he ran into his business for two minutes, and then... Instead of the car, there's a bike on the ground in the parking spot. And I said, what are you talking about? And I said, call 911. Lou calls 911. She gets on the Facebook, gets the message out. We need to find our car and our Lila. At the same time, that car thief was cruising down Gratiot, some eight miles south, loses control, and crashes into this silver car, sending two people in that vehicle to the hospital and him in handcuffs. Back seat, hanging out with him. Come here, little girl. Yes, police had Lila, none the worse for wear, slightly bruised eye. A happy ending in Roseville tonight. That's the scene with the night camp. Tim Pamplin, local four. Did you see how she was walking? I know, so I know. A couple of dog tales tonight, right? Yeah. That's true. Well, in Farmington Hills tonight, hundreds of losers gather to celebrate <laughs> an amazing feat. The right kind. Metro Detroit has celebrated losing more than 10,000 pounds with Weight Watchers. The event 50 Pounds and Beyond honored those who have lost more than 50 pounds with the program. President and CEO of Weight Watchers, Florine Mark, on hand for the event, uh, saying it was more than just weight loss. It's about building self-esteem and overcoming challenges and congratulations mm, to all. Very true. All eyes on Apple tonight as the company reveals new features on its signature iPhone from a tech addiction tool to group FaceTime and more. We'll show you what's coming. Also, an officer tracks down a bad guy, but it costs him his job and the dash cam video shows why. Sandra. From athletes like Steph Curry and Tom Brady to Olympic gymnast Ali Raisman, more athletes are turning to a trendy new form of therapy to help their bodies and minds.
they need the recovery um, of their muscles and um, back, you know, all the things that, that get injured. Now even men and women who don't play sports are using it to treat pain. I come usually every week after work on Monday. I go home, you know, blissed out. What are they doing and does it really work? The story tonight 